Hello, welcome to Financial Markets Weekly, an audio podcast by Succinct Information. This is a professional summary, free of noise, focused on facts, and straight to the point. We help you save time while covering the key events and market performance. These are the highlights from last week. It was a poor start to the third quarter of the year for global markets, with sentiment reversing from a week ago as stocks, and especially bonds, declined. Every developed market's equity index fell, losing on average 1.4%, with European benchmarks leading the fall, including France's CAC 40 plunging nearly 4%, and the broad stock 600 losing 3.1%. The main drivers of volatility, in a short trading week due to the holiday, were the Fed's minutes for its last meeting, and June's non-farm payrolls on Friday. The minutes of the policy meeting in which the Fed decided to keep interest rates unchanged reflected a clear hawkish stance by US central bankers. More rate hikes are planned but at a slower pace, as inflation is still considered elevated. Chairman Powell said the Fed still has a long way to go to bring inflation down to its 2% target. The last PCE inflation reading, the Fed's preferred indicator, was 4.6% year-on-year in May. On Friday, US non-farm payrolls for June showed that 209,000 new posts were created, below consensus, and the lowest print in two and a half years, showing a robust labor market but less tight than anticipated. US stock indexes traded softer as well with the S&P 500 and Nasdaq Composite losing around 1%, while the Dow Jones Industrials, which carries more value than growth stocks, dropped 2% last week. Sector-wise, healthcare and materials were the weakest industries. However, traders' focus was on fixed income markets as bond prices fell sharply, with yields spiking across maturities and regions. The yield on two-year U.S. notes closed at 4.93%, the highest since 2007, but given that the 10-year yield rose even more, to 4.05%, the curve inversion narrowed for the first time in two months. Short-end yields in Germany and the U.K. also hit 16-year highs, at 3.30% and 5.40%. The UK Debt Management Office placed £4 billion worth of new two-year gilts at 560%, the highest short-term borrowing cost in more than two decades. The weaker-than-expected non-farm payrolls reading pulled the dollar index lower by 0.6%, mainly against the British pound, the yen and the Kiwi dollar. Sterling closed at 128.30, the highest since April 2022 and is already up by 6% this year, as interest rate differentials between the US and the UK are expected to expand. A few bullets to complete today's episode. OPEC decided to deepen its crude oil production cuts by an extra 1.5 million barrels per day. Brent and WTI gained around 5% on the week, to $78.50 and $73.90. Most other commodities traded sideways and were little changed, except for natural gas which fell 8% in the US and 10% in Europe. Three emerging markets central banks left their monetary policy rate unchanged. Poland at 6 and 3 quarters, Malaysia at 3%, and Romania at 7%. Chinese stocks continue to trend lower, as the services PMI reading showed a modest deceleration in activity. Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index fell 3% with shares in Chinese banks plunging 12% on average. Two large IPOs were priced. Fintech Cab Payments raised £335 million in London, but shares disappointed, while nitrogen specialist Tussenkrupp Nucera raised 523 million euros in Frankfurt, with shares ending higher. Next week brings the start of the earnings season for Q2, the latest US headline CPI inflation, as well as China's inflation data. That's all for this week. 
Please subscribe to the channel and help us promote it. Visit succinct.info to learn more about our subscription service. Have a good week.